Okay, so we're doing the next Bonnet Talks video. Um, and this is one that I've been waiting for. This is what this is an exciting one because uh, it's so, so, I mean, it's the reason why we're doing any of them, really. Um, the, the virus obviously has uh, changed all of our lives. And uh, we're here with Dr. Zhang, who's going to talk a little about the history of what, 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 is, a, what is a virus and what, why is COVID-19 doing all it's doing. So you want to introduce yourself and go, go. it's all yours. Sure. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> I'm Xiaoning Zhang. Uh, I'm a professor at uh, biology at Bonaventure. I'm also the director for biochemistry program. So what is COVID-19? Why don't we start with there? Let's, we'll start yeah, as... Sure. So COVID-19 is the name for the disease this virus causes. Right, so uh, actually the virus has a name, it's called SARS-CoV-2. So, okay. Yeah, so that's the confusion about the two names. We say COVID-19 is the disease, just like we say diabetes. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, so we're talking about, so what, what exactly is a virus? Why don't we start, we we'll keep it as simple as possible, break it down for people who know nothing. So a virus, go. Sure. <laughs> a virus, basically, it has some protein, it has some genetic material, you put them together, boom, you have virus, right? So viruses, they don't really live on their own, they need hosts like us. For example, this particular one, they need to invade us and they use us as food. So they can eat, they can grow, they can propagate. And at the end, if we die, they go off finding other people as their food. So, so how that's long, the simple way. How long can it live by itself? Like, I, I, I obviously, it's right. if it's on a piece of material or whatever. Mm -hmm. So in general, um, any, any virus can only live probably by a few hours on its own. And then um, also it depends on the environment. For example, if you have very bright sunlight, UV light shining on it, that can reduce its um, time of living. Right, and then uh, if it's very cold like today, it's snowy, and then it's very humid, it can live for a longer time. So, but overall, it does not live very long by itself. So if, I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't think it's gonna go away anytime soon, but if it warms up, will it be tougher to spread or easier to spread? Um, in general, it should be tougher. However, okay. uh, for this one, it's very uh, interesting. It's not like any virus we have had in the past. Um, people have done experiments, scientists have tried, and then finding, you know, even if it's 50 Celsius, you put it, uh, you know, put the virus over there for an hour, it's still active. So this is a tough one. Um, so although summer is coming, but I don't think it's going to kill the virus. <laughs> have you looked outside? It's snowing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. um, so <clears throat> how does it spread? So it spreads through, um, in general, just talking about uh, general population. So if you touch with your hands, so if you get infected and then you sneeze or you use your hand to wipe your nose and rub your mouth or kind of rub your mouth, uh, like your nose and mouth and eyes basically. Um, so you can get virus on your hand and then you use the hand to touch anything else or somebody else, it will get transmitted. Okay. And how contagious is it? I mean, like, I've, I've been told everything. I, I, and let me, let me start by saying, uh, early, early on, before everyone was, you know, early on, I would say early January, um, I remember seeing, uh, they, they were saying r not. is that how it was pronounced? Yeah, r not. Which is a, a measure of the contagiousness of it, I guess, how many people get, uh, how many people catch it from one. Uh, yeah. the, 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 the person literally said, I've been doing this for my entire life. I've never seen any virus that is, it was like 3.8, he, he estimated early, early on. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, you hear people, and I, and I will say some economists, I will, I will throw them under the bus as well, saying, oh, it's not very contagious at all. So where, how contagious is it? And um, how, what, yeah, let's start with how contagious. Yeah, so this one is kind of in the middle, I would say. Mm -hmm. It depends on what you compare to. Right, so 
um, yeah, let's say around three and four, because things are still evolving or not, will eventually be calculated more to a definitive number at the end. Uh, but right now, I think it's considered maybe around three, sometimes some places has higher, sometimes some places is lower, but is not as high as meso. Meso is super contagious, right? right? So um, that's why vaccine is very important mm -hmm. for uh, for infants, so they don't get measles and then transmit it to a bunch of people. So this one, if let's say I get it and uh, I didn't protect myself and uh, I just go touch others, the average people, number of people I can give to is about three to four. Okay, so if, if I mean, obviously we're trying to, you know, social distance and everything else, what can we do to lower that number? What we can do is to cut the transmission. So if I have it, I don't want to use my hands to touch eyes, nose, and mouth, right? And then if I touch, I wash my hands to get rid of the virus before I touch anything else. Social distancing is helping because we basically space ourselves um, you know, apart enough. So if somebody accidentally have saliva coming out during talking or laughing, it won't get, into, get onto somebody else. However, this, is, this can be hard in some situations. For example, we all have to eat. We all have to go to grocery stores. And uh, it's very difficult to keep six feet away from each other when you are trying to get groceries, try to check out. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess this is going to be an easy one for you since one of the things you've been doing is making masks. So what else could we do? If, if we are going out, what should, we, should we, we be wearing masks? Would you recommend masks are a good thing? Or? Oh, absolutely. I have been uh, promoting mask making and mask wearing for like a month. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I know uh, people have a lot of questions about the cloth masks because obviously N95 is the best right. at this point, but we don't have enough for everybody on the planet, right? So then we have to find alternative, alternative approach. And that, as a matter of fact, N95 is not really needed in a normal setting like we go to grocery store. Right, so they're very important for the medical staff to have when they're in COVID ICU, when there are a lot of virus floating around. But in a grocery store setting, you're not expecting a lot of virus particle floating around in the air. Yeah. Right? So, so if you wear a mask, it's to prevent when you talk or you sneeze, the saliva gets into the air. So, I mean, so if, if you had it, it would prevent you from spreading it. And, right. and this, this is anecdotal, and this is just me being very curious about this. Um, it also seems like when I'm wearing a mask, it reminds me not to touch my face, not to do any of those things that you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing there's some impact there as well. Yeah, so I, I think really it depends on people, uh, different people, because for me, I would be just like you, oh, I have some barrier on my face, so I, I cannot directly touch yeah, my yeah. nose, so that reminds me. But some people may not uh, be that, I guess, have that awareness. They will still touch thinking, oh, I have barrier to cover, so I'm not really directly touching my nose, okay. but they're touching it. Okay. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and you want to talk a little about the the making of masks and I mean they don't have to be perfect right I mean better not perfect I guess right yeah so absolutely you know at the very beginning I have this belief right so we don't have to I mean, we can't have the perfect solution in this in this scenario so we have to find ways that can protect the mass so because the number of the mass, right so you have to look for the places look at look at the strategies that's you know applicable that's real realistic so that comes to old t-shirt like for me i make one for myself with old t-shirts right so the idea is you prevent those direct uh, saliva kind of splatter right so yes if you think about a lot of viral particle floating in the air it will go through the cracks through the clothes uh, that's for sure but that's a very very small chance in grocery store setting. And then if you wear it, I wear it, and then we are not too close, not, not like next to each other, then if I sneeze, it prevents me to give it to you through the saliva. And then gotcha. that's the whole point. So if, if I mean, I, I guess 
in finance, I'm a finance professor, so I have to do it from a financial angle. So one of the things, there's a problem, like if, if, if I, moral hazard problem, if I buy insurance or if you, you buy insurance and you go driving, you, you take bigger chances. One thing I, 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 I want to make sure, and I know we're on the same page on this one, just because you have a mask doesn't mean you can, you can avoid social distancing. It's not either or, it's both. No. Right? It's both. It's both. And then when you do hand washing, social distancing, and the wearing mask, that reduces the chance of you getting infected dramatically, more dramatically than only one of the three approaches. So yeah. we say in biology that's a synergy we're building. Very good. Very good. Um, and you're also making shields. How you want to talk a little about that? I, I think that's an exciting one. Where I, I love to see the 3D printers being used. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, the shield making actually uh, is quite interesting because when I saw it, it was from a uh, FDA approved uh, website with um, different shield designs. And then, um, so for me, I'm, I'm working in biology research. So in research, sometimes I wear face shields just to protect myself from UV light from other things. So that comes very natural for me if I want to really block any particles in front of me, right? I would wear a shield because that's a solid plastic, right? So, so is the shield, and I guess I'm asking this more for moving forward, um, is the shield both a shield and a mask or I mean, for, for healthcare professionals, absolutely, right? Right. So, yeah, so yeah, for general public, I don't think we have to wear both. Okay. Um, but if you work in a situation, you interact with a lot of people during a day, Let's I would recommend you wear both. A cashier. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So actually, I, uh, I, I discussed with my sister uh, about a week ago. My sister is a history teacher in high school in China. So she said they have been doing the um, stay at home order. Um, but then next Monday, they are going to start school again. Oh, okay. So um, in China, um, the thing is the government requires everybody to wear face masks when they go back to school, right? So students will have face masks on, but my sister was saying, well, I'm going to teach three hours back to back. I think I'm going to be lack of oxygen at the end <laughs> just because of the mask. So I recommended the shield. Um, and then we get into some discussion because the government requirement, also the well-being of her as a teacher. So I said, well, how about this? You put a mask on loosely. Mm -hmm. So it would be much looser, not acceptable if you were only wearing a mask or walking outside, but you put it on loosely um, and then you put a shield in front of you. So you so get you enough know. oxygen. Also, you protect yourself. So <laughs> my, my worry, what I, I love that idea and the, my, my worry and the reason I was really asking this is because as much as I want everyone to wear masks, I really think it's going to be tough if it does warm up, if, if the temperature is 90 degrees. Not many people are going to want to wear masks. I, I, exactly. I, I've done it with Bond Responds and it, it becomes a pain pretty fast. I totally agree. That's what I see. The shield has potential, more potential in summer just because you don't even want to have a lot of clothes on in summer, not to mention yeah. you have two, three layers of cloth in front of your face. Um, that's yeah. not, not very effective either because it gets wet from your sweat uh, very quickly, then it's not going to be very protective. But if you have a shield in front of you, it allows ventilation. Also, it prevents the direct splatter. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much. I don't know if you, I mean, you, you've, we're going to do another one at some point on the actual biology of the, the virus. But uh, right now, I, I, mean, I think this is, this was wonderful, super exciting. And uh, you, you, my hat's off to all the work you're doing uh, on both the, the shields and the masks. If someone wanted to help and get involved, how would they do that? Oh, they can just contact me. Contact you? Okay. Yeah, so right now you? we are, uh, I'm coordinating with five, six people. Um, so, and then Josh is coordinating with me. So we do a lot of transportation and then communication and then also assembly and the printing, uh, you know, different people do different parts. But so far it works very well. Yeah, if other people want to get involved, let me know. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it. You. All right. Very exciting. Bye. <laughs>